I think it's outside. Look in your Bible, Matthew chapter 13. We're going to do 51 and 52. 13, chapter, chapter 13, verses 51 and 52. The parable of the new and the old treasures. Uh, it was, it, it, I texted Curtis earlier in the week, and I said, or maybe last week, I said, hey, study these two verses. I don't believe in coincidences, but we met, and, and, and he had a desire to come and sing and worship the Lord with us because of an old treasure, his granddaddy. And the fact that he got off the road for a little while and spent a lot of time with his granddad, uh, and, and they would watch church, and they would talk about church, and, and he got to know us through his relationship with his granddad. Uh, and, and y'all, uh, grandparents are an old treasure, amen? Uh, now that I am one, I never valued them to the extreme or the amount that I should have, because now I am one, I realize how good we are. <laughs> amen? Yeah. We finally worth something. Yeah, so, so value your grandparents. I mean, you kids need to value that relationship. Uh, and Curtis really valued his relationship with his granddaddy. He wrote a lot of, he's written a lot of songs about that relationship and about what his granddaddy told him and shared with him and, and, and the impact he made. And so uh, I, I hope that, that in this little quick teaching, you can see what really makes a treasure is just a few simple things, and the fact that we each and every one of us are in charge of a treasure. We each, each one of us, as Christians, believers, born again, uh, followers of Jesus Christ, we, we have the opportunity to, uh, we, in fact, we have the responsibility to create treasure. And before you leave, these two little verses ought to have you scratching your head uh, and either repenting, are asking for a little bit more because I don't believe until we get to heaven we'll grasp, grasp the true value of these treasures. Uh, I, I, I got a glimpse of it. I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to break it down. So Matthew chapter 13, 51 and 52 says, Have you understood all these things? Now Jesus, we've been, we're studying the parables of Jesus all year and Jesus is, is ending this session of teaching. He's been teaching for a pretty good while. But he's, he's beginning to wrap it up. And he asks his disciples, do you understand all these things? Uh, and they said to him, yes. Can I just first say I think they're full of bull? And I wish one of them would have been honest and said, no, not yet. Can you explain a little bit further? Because, but, but it also reminded me of how much the disciples were just, just people, just normal, everyday men. You know why I know that? Because if you ask, you talk to any man, and it, say he's going, like I did it just the other day. I was going to do a wedding Friday afternoon in Alba, and I, and I got, I GPSed it, and I'm like, this ain't making no sense. When I got to Lake Fork, I knew this ain't making no sense. And as GPS got me to Yanis, I'm like, this ain't good, because this ain't right. Well, I called a bride's daddy, which is a friend of mine, and I said, man, Keith, I ain't where I'm supposed to be. And, and it's 20 minutes before wedding time. And, uh, and I, I, this thing has got me thought way off, and I need to know where you're at. Oh, man, let me just tell you real quick, like get back on 69, come back down 69 south to 766, take a ride on 766, go to County Road, la da 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 Once you get on the County Road, the third County Road, you'll see the balloons. You got it? I said, I got it. <laughs> I lied. Before I got back to 69, I forgot what was the next far on the market road. But would I call him and say, hey, I didn't quite get it? No, no. We drove 110 miles an hour down five county roads and two farm to market roads, and we found it <laughs> with two minutes to spare. N n note to self, they were still 15 minutes from being wet ready to do the wedding. Here's your parable. Every scribe that's been trained, that's been trained for the kingdom of heaven, the parables were given to us, was given to those followers of Christ in a way that they could understand and grasp what he was teaching, but others would not get it. I mean, I, it's just the truth. The parables were given by Jesus, so those who were trained and following and studying and learning under him would grasp the meaning, what he's trying to say, and most people wouldn't. I, I, I want you to understand that because it's important that you decide and learn today. If we leave, we're not, we don't need to go no further without you knowing if you're truly a scribe of the kingdom of heaven or not. If you truly know, if you're truly learning, if you've been trained 
Have you been trained? Uh, and we have got to grasp the condition of our country and the condition our country's headed. You better be trained up in the kingdom of heaven or this world's going to smoke your tail left and right. Amen? And so you got to be trained up. So I, this is, this is going to be different than anything you'll study that I found you can study in uh, uh, Bible scholars because I don't agree with them at all on this teaching. Most Bible scholars will say this is teaching how a scribe in the kingdom can take and pull the treasures out of the Old Testament and pull the treasures out of the New Testament to gain a greater insight and an understanding. It's not what this says to me at all. It says to me that I am a scribe for the kingdom if I am a trained follower of Jesus. He's talking to his disciples. He said, if you are a trained scribe, what's a scribe? A scribe is somebody that writes, a writer, a, 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 a city clerk. So, so listen, well, you, know what that, you know what I also, you know, you know what he's telling them? The books of heaven, the books in the kingdom of heaven are still being written, and you're the ones writing in them. And you need to be trained and know how to write in the books of heaven. You are writing in the Lamb's book of life. All y'all. And when he opens it up to your chapter, I hope you got something wrote in it. I hope that sinks in. Because he wants you to, he wanted his disciples to understand the books aren't closed. The books are open. And he says, every writer that's been trained and working for the kingdom of heaven, he's like a master in his, in his, in his ability to bring forth Treasures out of old times and treasures out of new times. I've been studying and reading on this parable, and the Lord started reminding me of some treasures. And I remember when that little fart couldn't figure out how to hold a rope. And I remember teaching him how to hold a rope. And I remember teaching him how to swing his rope. I remember teaching him how to sit on his horse. I remember when them four boys won their first check at a ranch rodeo. And them four boys now are grown men got jobs and, and, and doing things and working. And, them, and that's in my office. And that's Ty when he was just learning to rope. And I preached a sermon after this roping called Chunk It because that sucker would track a steer till he became hamburger meat, <laughs> waiting on the perfect shot. And I was, I was screaming, just chunk it, just throw it. I flashed back to when he was this age, which was probably about 10 or 11, and he goes, Dad, don't ride up there and just chunk it. When you get there, get in a little bit of time and, and put it, you know, stick it on him. Don't just, you're just racing up there, and as soon as you get close, you're chunking 32 foot at him. Just chunk it. He said, and I'm thinking, and I'm, I'm going, oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's an old treasure. That's an old treasure in my book that I'm writing, and I am trained in the kingdom and I am recognizing what true treasures are because of the training in the kingdom. Y'all follow me? There's another old picture. That's an even older treasure. Them's my grandparents. That's my grandmother who I got to go see. Me and Dale, we all went to Grapeland and see my grandmother's 93. I'm not asking Dale no more because he lies to me. He just, he just roundabouts it. 93, Lena? Okay, Lena's telling the truth. 93. <laughs> my grandma, we had to see, go see my, you know what, that's, a, and, and I know, I, listen, while I'm sitting on that horse watching Ty and listening to Ty give me advice, even though I'm the one that taught Ty, I went all the way back to my uncle under my grandparents' carport when we were all so broke, we roped a bucket, and we had to share a rope, and there was 10 or 12 of us, and every time I would pick up the rope, being naturally left-handed, I wanted to swing it left-handed, which if any of y'all ever picked up a rope that's right-handed rope, it jacks up the rope, right? And so my uncle would quickly go, poof, put that thing down and pick it up with the right hand. Took me back to an older treasure than me teaching Ty was my uncle teaching me how to pick up a rope and swing it. And that's in my book. That's described. Listen, your life has treasures in it. And a trained writer for the kingdom of heaven knows what true treasures are and he uncovers them he unwraps them uh, uh, the word scribe is means a writer or a town clerk the kingdom of heaven is those that operate under the authority of god a master 
A master is the one that is in control or in charge. He's the head of the house. What is the house? Your body, your being is the house. You, I, you are, you, you, your soul, you, you, who you are, your soul and spirit is what is within your body, right? This temporary temple. This is the house. And so way too many Christians that aren't the master of their house, their house is their master. And let me tell you, if your house is your master, you're not a trained writer for the kingdom of heaven. You got a lot of white out, and you hope Jesus keeps a bucket full of white out real handy. So when you get to heaven, he goes, oh, please write that, wipe that out, Lord. Please, oh, don't, I didn't mean for that to happen. Are you going to be proud when the books are opened? Are you going to hope he's deleted those pages out of the books? See, we're writing. Here's the, here's, I think the reason we all want to think this is about the Old Testament and the New Testament is because it don't make us have to do anything. I want you to understand, if, if all the Old Testament points toward the coming of Jesus, all the New Testament points to the revelation, the, the, the life of Jesus. So, so, listen, I agree. The Old Testament is a treasure. You should always study the Old Testament. And as you grow in insight, understanding, getting things from the Old Testament, seeing them fulfilled and come to life in the New Testament, you are more able to apply them in your own life. I'm not taking anything from that. I agree, like Paul said, we ought not shrink back from teaching the whole counsel of God. Because all of God's word is good for the edification, the building up of his saints. Amen? I believe we should study the whole word. But I believe as trained disciples, we ought to be writing. And we ought to be advancing the kingdom through the lives that we live and the, and the pens of heaven are writing an account of your life and my life. And what Paul's saying is just what I seen at that rodeo as I watched it. I watched three generations of our family. And I seen how we advanced in our lives and in, in in, in who we are in, 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 in cowboy world. I've watched them four boys that was on that, 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 uh, in that picture it become men and advance. And now that they, they live in different areas and now they're in different places. And, but now, and all of them, all four of them, are growing and becoming men of God. I got another one sitting right here on the front row that follows me around. He thinks I'm the coolest dude in ever, and I'm good with that. When he's, I mean, we're, we're finna go look for new trucks because I like him. <laughs> Who's following you behind? Who's following behind you? Who's looking at you as you write? And when those kids get old enough to read, will they have any treasures, any old treasures that you have deposited into their lives? Are you too worried about gathering up your treasures, worldly treasures? You hit it. You said, we get too focused. Talking about them kids up yonder. You know, y'all can be a billion different places, and none of them places last very long. We've all done it. The key is grasping true treasures. The, true, the, the treasure are deposits. They're what we are investing. Uh, if you look in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth which a moth or rust destroy where thieves break in and steal. Lay up for yourselves or store up or build up or make deposits of, for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy where thieves do not break in and steal where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. How do you make these deposits in heaven? By being a, a trained scribe in the kingdom for the kingdom while you're here you're writing you're adding to the kingdom you're advancing the kingdom you are searching and how do you do that you're able to pull from the old and from the new here's the key to being a good scribe here's the reason why i don't know uh, why this is why the devil wants to deceive you and you not grasp this writing and understand this because you choose what your deposits are you choose you look at Matthew 12, 35. Matthew 12, 35. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. The evil person out of the evil treasure brings forth evil. So what are you making? What is your... And listen, and I don't, I don't want you to mis, misunderstand me. I don't believe every situation is of God. I think I made a lot of stupid choices that got me in some bad situations. In fact, every time I was pulled over, with them red and light that's going on in my rearview mirror, I did not say, God has a plan. <laughs> and if you said that, you need to wake up because that wasn't his plan. You was speeding. Amen? But you know what I've learned? 
even in those times where I've been pulled over, delayed, detained, and slightly incarcerated, <laughs> even in those times, I can find a treasure. Even in those times. Even in those times when I'm flat broke, busted, on my back, can't move, I can find a treasure if I have a good eye and seek the good that is of God that's within all the bad that's in this world. Can I tell you, this world ain't got bad yet. But we're going. And you're going to see badder. And you're going to see worser. But it's up to you if you find the good and make deposits into the good that's in the treasury of the kingdom of heaven so that whenever you need the good, you can pull from the good and speak good and be good and bring good to any bad situation. The reason we ain't got enough riders for the kingdom of heaven is too many Christians are focused on all the bad. We're keeping an account of the bad. Oh, done wrong there. Done wrong there. Lied to there. No, no, can't trust that. No, I can't forgive that. There's got to be some good, right? Keep track of the good. Pull out of every situation in your life. Out of the old. The treasure's out of the old. Pull them. Do you know some of my favorite sermons that I've ever preached were from when I was 6 and 7 and 8 years old, 10, 11, and 12 years old? Why is that? Because them are treasures. Until the Lord redeemed me and I truly surrendered to sacrifice to serve him uh, with my life and accepted his sacrifice, which gave me the authority and the uh, power to live in his grace, they were just stories. Now they're treasures. They're old treasures that I was taught. When I reflect on my life, I see how God was teaching me at 7 and 8 and 9 and preparing me for where I'm at today. Do you or do you just see how wrong your parents were for getting a divorce and how wrong your first girlfriend was for breaking up with you for your best friend? Or do you just how many times you were wronged? Or do you lay up the treasures? Praise God your first girlfriend broke up with you so she could torment your best friend. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> right? But we don't do that. We, and listen, listen, in our society today, we're training our children to not do that. We're, we're, tr we're training, not we as church, we as society. We are teaching our children to be better victims. Victims always remember all the bad. Victors decide, I will not be defined by the bad. I will find the good, and I will build upon the good, and I will remember the good. And out of the abundance of my heart, which I choose what I store up in my heart, will come good or bad. Amen? Amen? So how, what kind of book are you writing? A horror book? The next uh, true crime saga. I'm, I'm going to write the next lonesome door. If you'd be perfect, go and sell what, you're, what you possess, give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. What he's saying is exactly what Curtis was talking to them young people. You're making deposits. And this young guy knew the word, knew he was, he was a learned of the word, and he was a good guy, right? And he, all of his treasures were right here, all earthly. And the Lord says, well, you know, you, you got a lot of treasures, but if, you, if you're willing to give up those treasures here and start making these deposits in the kingdom, in heaven, that's what he wants for all of us. He wants us to make deposits. He tells his disciples, it's such a short, short, powerful uh, verse. He says, it, he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of his house. At some point in time, you have to master your house, and you've got to stop letting your house master you. And it's not about being perfect. It's not about being religious. It's about being in control. I'm in control of me because I decide that I will allow him to have total control. Do you know what? I mean, I, I, do you know how big of a cop out it is to say well, the, the Lord is in control? He has a plan. You are in control. He will never take your freedom to make choices. Never. It's your choice every day if you wake up and say, Lord, we're going to write a new page today. And I'm giving you total control. I'm surrendering to write down to glorify you and honor the kingdom and advance the kingdom. And I want to write on this life and I want to write on that life. And Lord, I'm going to trust the treasures of old 
and I'm going to ride it, I'm going I'm to see. Listen, until you be, listen, here's the truth. But until you begin to grasp and recognize his treasures in your life that are of the old, you will miss the ones that are in the new. Did y'all get that? But as you grow in understanding in your relationship with the Lord, as you begin to know him, stop knowing about him, really know him, you will see how he was so involved with you, how he was a part of your life, how he was there for you, how he, why he did not want that, he was, he was there even in that. And you begin to see, that's my treasures of old, and can't nobody take that from me. And the more you know how much he loved you in those times, the more valuable that treasure is. And as you see who he was and how he played out in your old and how in your life he's been such an evolved part, you will see him in the new. And then you'll want to write even more newer. I want to write on these, this boy's heart treasures. When he grows up, I don't want him to think church was boring and I slept all the time. I want him to go, you know what, I had a treasure for a little while. That preacher was thawed off. And he wouldn't let us go to sleep. Or he'd irritate me. He'd pinch my ear. Or he'd punch me when he goes by me. I, 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 I'm not the girls, the guys. I like hitting them. We got, to, we got to see where we're at as scribes, guys. We are writing. We are writing for the kingdom. And you're right. You have the opportunity to put treasures in others' lives, in others' hearts, so that they can make deposits. And so when you're dead and gone, they can withdraw from the treasures of old. Do you, are you putting anything down on anybody's heart? Are you making any, helping anybody have anything to deposit? We should, be, we should be striving to make these deposits in others' lives. We should, we should be seeking those that are in our lives. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, but we have this treasure. We have this treasure in jars of clay, the house, in this old body. We have this treasure in this old body to show the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Amen? We have this treasure in these bodies, in this house, and as a master of my own house, I grasp and understand the magnitude and the opportunity I have to display the power of God, not me. It's Christ in me, not me. It's the Lord's love for me, not my love for the Lord. It's, it's so important that we begin to grow up and become a trained follower, a trained scribe. I guarantee you, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I hate to say I guarantee you because that makes me sound like I know something. I'd be willing to bet, <laughs> I don't know if that's better in church or not. <laughs> I want, here, here's what I, <laughs> this is your homework. You go home and get a blank piece of paper, and you write down 10 old treasures in your life. And then you write down 10 new treasures in your life. And put down beside the treasures who, 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 where they came from? Who made the deposit? And who are they, or who are you depositing it for? Because you need to know. We got to get past the time and day when we could go to church and not know nothing, not learn nothing, not want nothing, and walk away with nothing. Not just in our church, in every church in America, because we're going to, we are going to be what holds America together. We will be. And you know what we're going to use to hold America together? Our treasures. You know what will be found to be the true value of this country? Whatever we treasure. Your freedom. Right? That's what will be the values of our nation, our freedoms. Tie out roping me, that's a new treasure. Ethan Craig being a better cowboy than me, his daddy, Dale, that's a real treasure. Tudor, let me get back to you on that. His mama said he's a treasure. Tudor being able to be relaxed no matter what condition. Not blowing up and being mad, right? I mean, he's going to outlive us all. That's a true treasure. And Ty, uh, I would have to say Ty adjusting to most everything other than me yelling. That's a true treasure. Ty overcoming 
making a transition from a boy to a man. All, all these kids were treasures, new treasures in your life. I got new treasures even more than that. I got McCray. Terry took a picture of him and sent it to me. He had his cowboy hat on. That's my grandson. He's pushing four. Had his cowboy hat on, and he found an old vest. I had an old vest when I, when I was a little kid, and he had that vest. That's all he had on. That's some, that's some underwear on. <laughs> she said he found Jay Paul's old vest, and he's been a cowboy all day. Shoo. Treasure. Probably, that vest probably didn't cost $4. New treasure. I got memories of my dad and them treasures. More importantly than that, wake up, son. I got memories of my father in heaven's love for me. Can't nobody take my treasures. But if you don't count them as treasures, you don't even know what's in the account. And if you don't know what's already been deposited into your account, how do you know what needs to be deposited in the new accounts. We need to be depositing treasures, folks. We need to be depositing treasures, and we need to know where to go. We need to know what they are. We need to know where to get them. Let, let me just finish with this. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. And I don't care what kind of conditions you come from, there's treasures. Joseph's own brother sold him into slavery. He went through all that mess. Y'all know the story. I'll go through it more on Wednesday night. Now his brothers are standing there begging for food. And Joseph had the upper hand. And Joseph said... You meant it evil against me, but God meant it for good. To bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. You know what Joseph could do? Know the real treasure. Joseph made that, tre that deposit in his treasury. And Joseph wrote in the life, in the kingdom. He was a disciplined, trained scribe writing because he knew, how to va he knew what the value was. He knew what the treasures were. And you got to know and see what the treasures are in your own life. And then you got to know and see what treasures are for the next generation's life so that you're writing in their book true treasures. Got to quit writing in comic books. Christianity's been a comic book for the last 50 years or so. We, we, we want to feel good, be happy, and make us laugh. And then we want to question and have a hard time and be mad about the struggles. It's in the struggles that I found my greatest treasures. That's the truth. But I want you to make sure you know to know the treasures. Teach the treasures to your children. Teach the treasures to your children, your grandchildren, so that they would know the true treasures are things from the Lord, from the Father above. Let me pray. Father, thank you.